This is a Shock Podcast. Shock. The C Word with Callista. So in the past few years, especially, borders keep blurring and we're becoming increasingly global, right? English might be our international norm, but now more than ever, we're appreciating and getting immersed in each other's cultures and languages. So I wanted to talk to someone who is truly living that 2022 international dream. You probably know him from K-pop group Into It, but I actually know him from a small little shop back in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. It's a story we'll get into, but first, Isaac Wu, welcome to The Sea Word. Hi everyone, this is the first Malaysian K-pop idol Isaac from Into It. Woo, Woo! I can't believe that I'm actually sitting here talking to you right now because your journey has been so insane. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> so you've been in Korea for how long now? For five or six years. Okay, welcome and back then, to Malaysia. Yeah, you said you've been back, back for two years, right? Yes, yeah, for two years. How does it feel to be home after all of that? It is so, so, so great because I get to spend time with my family after so long and get mm. to meet uh, all of the Malaysian fans through events. Okay, so you were in Korea for five or six years. Within those five or six years, how many times did you get to come home? Uh, maybe once a year, but only just a few days. Okay, so did your family go and visit you there? Yes, of course. Okay, so you still have time off. You just couldn't really travel yes. back. Yes. For those who might not recognize Isaac Wu, okay, he is the first Malaysian K-pop idol. Yes. Um, he's in a group called Into It. But can you like give me the cliff notes of like who you are and who the group is? Okay, so for all of those people who doesn't know who am I? Hi everyone, I'm the first Malaysian K-pop idol who debuted in Into It, and we are the survivors of the Survivor program by Mnet which is called Boys 24. Let's (laughs) take it all the way back okay like so who was Isaac before the idol life? Actually I am just a kid who has a strong dream to become a K-pop idol and also this kid managed to make his dream came true. Yeah, just okay. a normal, ordinary guy. And this dream must have been like way before, right? Because like, I mean, K-pop's super popular now and it's been popular for a few years. Yes. But I feel like you got in before it went right. internationally yeah. insane. Yeah, yes, right? yes, yes. How did you even have this dream? Because of TVXQ, Dongbang Shingi, Sonbenim. And then mm-hmm. that's why I got into K-pop. So it's Form 3. I'm, since I'm, Form 3? Yes, since Form 3. Okay. Like 15 years old. Okay, so just to paint the story, right? You're 15 years old. You're going to... Which school did you go to in KK? Lok Yuk. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know that? Of course I oh, know yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Saban. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Lok Yuk. You were 15 years old in Form 3 preparing for... PMR. That it was time still PMR. called PMR, yes. Okay. And then you decided, okay, I really want to be a K-pop idol. How did you even like find a way to get into this whole industry? I went to Korea after I graduated okay. because when I'm still in school, I'm just a normal kid who danced with my friends mm-hmm. and just a kid who loved K-pop. After that, I made a dance crew. We went to Korea to represent Malaysia to compete with other countries like oh. K-pop dance cover competition. Okay, so it started from dancing. Yes. And then when did you realize that you could sing? Because all of my family members, they are singers. Like mm-hmm. my brother, sister, uh, mother, and father, they all singers except me. So <laughs> I was kind of sad because why I can't sing so well like them. So I went to Korea. So I just practiced very, very hard. Mm. Okay, so I mean, I guess that's a lesson, right? Like they always say everyone can sing if you go and like learn the techniques, right? Uh-huh. So if you practice hard enough, no matter like if you're not good at something, like it could still turn out okay, right? At least you try. Mm. Yeah. So everyone, I maybe if you really have this kind of dream, you just don't say that, oh, I'm ugly. Oh, I'm fat. I, I can't sing. I can't dance. Actually, this is impossible. Mm-hmm. You can make it more better. Okay, okay. Mm. And then you said you went to Korea with a group of friends. Yes. So what happened to that group of friends? So actually we went to Korea just for dance cover competition. Mm-hmm. After that, actually we already bought the flight ticket to get back to uh, Malaysia. But I just told my friends that you guys just go back. Just leave me here alone. You guys just go back. Don't Don't care about me. And then I called my mom. She was like, are you insane? <laughs> because <laughs> I, I'm the youngest in the family, right? Mm-hmm. So they were so shocked. And then that is my first time 
I go to other country like overseas. So at first they were still so no, you can't. You just you need to come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you just decided to like stay? Yeah, I I just told them you please just give me three months because we have the the three months of the visa, right? Uh huh. So I just say just give me three months and then. If I really couldn't make it, and then I will come back. Wow! So in that three months, I really worked very, 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 very hard. So what 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 happened? Okay, you're there alone, but like you you haven't had anything set up. You have nowhere to stay. No, you, no. <laughs> you have no one that you know there. I have friends, friend. Uh huh. So actually, we are not that knowing each other, but she helped me a lot. She helped me to find a place to stay. And then she, some more, she taught me、uh, some Korean words as well. So at that time, you couldn't speak Korean at all. I ever went to class for like six months、mm-hmm. in Kota Kinabalu. Okay. And then I just flew to Korea directly. So I haven't have a chance to speak to Korean yet. So when I reached there, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to speak Korean right now. <laughs> I was so shocked that I can actually understand what are they talking about. Yeah, that is that is the shock point. So when you got there, right? Like all these K-pop groups, obviously they're from a talent company, right?、Mm-hmm. So how did you even get a way to kind of audition? Okay, so actually I went to quite a lot of companies、mm-hmm. like SM, JYP, Big Hit. But oh yeah, I passed the first round of SM auditions.、Ooh. Like among of thousand people. I'm the only one who stayed down to accept the second round, and then I went to Singapore for second round for the SM auditions. Singapore. Yeah. Oh. Because that time they still doing the global audition something. So what groups came out after that year of auditions? NCT. Oh. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Actually, I have some of the chances to debut as others teams like SF9. Mm-hmm. Because I went to FNC before, because I just walked by and then the the people just cast me. Please go to our company. And do you know CM Blue? Do you so- know CM Blue? I was like,、uh-huh. ah, yes, I know. Why? Then she was so shocked. And then, please come to our office later, eight p.m. like that. Then too bad because of height. <laughs> what? You're pretty tall. What? Okay, I'm short, so maybe it's hard for me to <laughs> kind of tell. No, like compared to <laughs> other members, maybe they are taller. How tall are you? One seven something. <laughs>、okay. I mean, I, I'm not even one fifty, so we're not gonna judge height here.、Uh- <laughs> And then actually, I have a chance to、uh, debut as the group VAV. Okay. Yeah, because I went to their company,、mm-hmm. and then it's because of height problem again. <laughs> uh, okay, I I kind of understand. Like when I was、uh, younger, and I this is before I wanted to be in radio, right? Like I wanted to do all these like catwalk things or like、oh, on video, like、uh-huh. commercials and stuff. It always was a problem. It's like you're okay, but like <laughs> you're too、yeah. small. <laughs> so because height cannot change already, right? Even、yeah. though you wear heels, but、yeah. still not that high. <laughs> yeah, people always ask me the same thing. It's like, oh my god, you're so short, and then I show them <laughs> I'm actually wearing like super high heels. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, you know. There are always different things to do. Like、yes. you get rejected for some things, but something better might come yes, along, right? That's why I'm here with Intuit members right now. So Intuit is under which company? We are under CJ E and M, which means M and More before,、mm-hmm. but we terminated our contract already with them. I see.、Mm. So now it's kind of in the air. No, uh, now all of the members they went to military,、mm-hmm. so we are doing all everything by our own right now. Okay. So this team is still alive, everyone. Okay, and that's why you're in Malaysia for like the past yes. years, right? Everyone's like kind of building their own thing, and then when everyone comes back out, you'll all get back together, right? Yes. Okay, okay, and then so this group has been around for like five years now. Four years. Four years plus. Yeah, four years plus. Okay, so. What was that journey like? I mean, they always there's always a stereotype to be a K-pop idol. The training is super intense. Like、mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not something a normal human being would be able to go through. So is that true? Like, was it really hard? Actually, it's true because it was like a 
roller coaster right i had of course great times and also tough times there but thanks to the experience i'm much more stronger right now as for the obstacles korean language is one of the challenges mm. for me because i was kind of struggling at first because i have limited proficiency mm-hmm. but as time goes it got better and also before the broadcast of boys 24 we have practiced almost every day and I was surprised to see everyone were so good. So that's why I keep questioning myself. Why am I a bit different with them? Mm-hmm. That's why I actually, during the broadcast, I cry because I keep questioning myself. Mm-hmm. So I felt really pressure about it, but actually also motivated me to work more harder and improve myself. The best part of being idle is definitely getting the love and support from our interviews from all around the mm-hmm. world. And also, I got the chance to meet BTS Sombenim. You met BTS? Yeah. Oh and my I, god, I'm so jealous. Because he, <laughs> BTS Sombenim was my like idol mm-hmm. before. At that time, we met BTS Sombenim. It's because we have to exchange our CD. So And then I told my members, please give me to write something for them. Mm-hmm. Because we have to write something for the artist every time right so I wrote like an essay (laughs) and then you pass it to them yeah and then surprisingly they knew who am I (gasps) and then it's it is because I did the uh, the reaction video of their idol Mm -hmm. on when I doing live I just reaction to their uh, music video and then that goes viral and then until they know who am I so I was like oh how do you know okay well you have to like spill tea who's the nicest member of the band personally for you you mean for uh, BTS BTS oh, mm. oh I remember it is J-Hope Sombenim not surprising yeah, yeah he, he he kept talk. hey you guys do you know him and then he's the one who do the who did the uh reaction video and then they were like ah oh yeah I see Mm, yeah he seems like really down to earth right yeah because actually there's one time I just passed by like this Mm -hmm. and then he was sitting over there Mm -hmm. and then I didn't even go there I didn't even pass by him but he just stand up and bowed to us and I was like wow it is so far and then I was like oh yeah and they'll say oh like this I'm sure all the BTS army is like gonna be really happy to know like they're actually how we imagine them to be in real life Mm. I feel like that's something like especially with like K-pop you don't know right because everything's so controlled yes like how do we know whether that's their real personality or stuff yes yes I think being able to talk to you is, is really eye-opening in a way because n- now we kind of know like what behind the scenes is mm-hmm. like. Because you get all the good news about being a K-pop idol and then mm-hmm. you get all the bad like um, stereotypes about yes. training to be an idol. Yes. So you would say it's not as bad as people think it is? Mm, yes. Mm. Mm. So now you said you were struggling with Korea and you've been s- speaking it for like five years. Are you fluent now? Maybe. <laughs> okay, so you, you made it lah, basically. I mean, I understand what are they talking about. Okay, but yeah. when, then when you go on like, you guys have to go on like a lot of those variety shows and yes, stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. So are you able to like hold a full-on conversation if you do that? Like, are you do you still get nervous? Uh, No, because mm. I am the one of the loud member <laughs> so this is still Sabahan that's why <laughs> <laughs> we're always the loudest yes <laughs> honestly I've been trying to like learn Korean from like Duolingo oh. and like oh my God, it's so hard like I'm like oh this is easy and then like one more chapter I'm like I have no idea what's going on <laughs> so you stop I didn't stop but like earlier on you were talking to your manager in Korean right mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to understand what you're talking about oh yeah. Like, I'll be able to understand maybe specific basic, words. Basic, like, yeah. 안녕하세요. Yeah, but when you put me in a situation where I I don't know what the whole conversation is about, mm-hmm. and I just have to, like, listen, I wouldn't I wouldn't know where to start. Then, uh, do you know, nor chuaheyo? Those words sound familiar, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what uh, they are. <laughs> that means, I love you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you know how many people are, like, so jealous right now like <laughs> Isaac Wu just told me that he loves me in Korean guys <laughs> well actually I feel like this is a, the part where we have to like take it back a little bit because we actually have a history uh huh <laughs> I think this was way before you discovered K-pop right like when you were in primary school <laughs> yes 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 we actually met and we had like 
interaction because I was working part time at your mom's shop. Yeah, <laughs> but if I can kick it. Yes, that is so like it's surprisingly that we able to met right now and talk to each other. It's so surreal because he's like twenty years old. Probably school holiday. I was like thirteen, fourteen years old. I was just like, oh, let me just like go and do something. Yeah, and no then, idea how I even found your mom's shop to begin with. <laughs> and then I remember my my mom told me that you you were just a little girl who walked by and then asked, uh, "Do you have vacancy over here?" <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, and I was like really good friends with your sister. Oh. Yeah, so we used to hang out a lot, Fiona. Fiona. Oh, yeah. so we used to hang out a lot, and then um, of course, like because we were really young, right? And then we started going <laughs> on our own way. We were in different schools, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kind of lost touch, and then social media came about. We kind of reconnected again. Oh. And then I had no idea it was you who went to Korea. Ah. There was once I was walking around the same shopping mall where, mm-hmm. <laughs> where your oh, you mom shop was. Oh, okay, okay. And then your mom recognized me. She's like, oh my god, hi. I heard you're in radio now. Did you know my son, Isaac, is in Korea? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, <laughs> he joined a K-pop band. I was like, what? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, so, things just unexpected. It's so surprising. Like, all these things you would never imagine yes. would have happened, right? Yes, yes, yes. I think at the end of the day, it's really important to like, whatever you're doing right now, like if you're still in school or if you're still, you know, studying, you're like, oh, I'm not really good at school. Mm. I, I don't know whether you were good at school. I wasn't. <laughs> um, you know, like, and you want to do something else. You never know. It might seem impossible now. Yes. But you just got to try. That's why. I just met my friend yesterday mm-hmm. and then she told me that I'm ugly and, but, what? Your friend told you she, that you're ugly? No, she's just very <laughs> negative. Uh-huh. So, and because he just graduated mm-hmm. and she had no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. So I just told her that don't force yourself to do what you want to do first. Mm-hmm. Just let... Go, go, go with the flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so she, she's also, like, kind of not sure what she wants to do with her yes. life. Yes. I mean, it's okay. I mean, especially now, like, everyone just finished SPM and everything, yes. right? Like, it's 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 a tough time in your life. But I've said this before, like, I never knew I wanted to be in radio. Yeah. Like, I had horrible stage fright when I was a kid. Oh. So, like, who knows what you're going to be doing this time next year? Yes, yes. Even if we bring it back to, like, the K-pop group into it, right? Mm. Everyone went to military service. Obviously, you are not Korean, so you don't need to go to military mm-hmm. service. Were you scared when you found out like you would have to like the group would kind of have to go on hiatus, right? Actually, it's kind of because mm-hmm. I have nothing to do, mm-hmm. and then at that time I don't have social media yet, mm-hmm. so I really don't have things to do. So I was kind of scared at that time. Were you guys not allowed to have your own social media? No, after we uh, get out from the company, mm-hmm. yes, we we just can do anything we like to do. Okay, so while you were in the company, you had your group, but you couldn't yeah. have so- solo. Yes. Okay, so what was it like, like just suddenly having to deal with your own social media? It's kind of new for me mm-hmm. because I used to play like all social media, like mm-hmm. all Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I made myself... Uh, I made a new account and I was realized, oh, you can do story, you can do live. And then it's so singi eh. What is singi eh? Sorry? Amazing. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac's manager is here like translating, so. <laughs> Suddenly I forgot. <laughs> no, that's the problem with being like not even bilingual, right? Trilingual. Yeah. It's like, you, you remember words in a different language yes. but you don't remember the one that you're speaking. <laughs> that's why, you know, when I, when I do live, every time with my fans, I have to speak like a lot of languages like mm. Korean, Japanese, uh, Chinese, Malay, English. I have to mix everything. I noticed you've been doing a lot of Malay on your account as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that hard? Because especially like we're both from Sabah. Yes. Our Malay is very different from like yeah. s- like Semenanjo or KL Malay, uh. right? So how are you finding that? Because I froze up. I refuse to speak Malay. I can speak Malay, but I refuse to speak it because I felt so different. Ah, uh, I realized that there's quite different from uh, KL and KK. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what do you speak now? Do you, do you still have that Sabahan kind of like, I, accent? I think so. <laughs> mm. It's really hard to get rid of it, right? Yeah. yeah. And then people look at you like, why Why is your Malay so strange? But they, they love Sabahan accent, that's why. It's easier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I first came over, I felt like people didn't really understand me. And oh. I, I just found it easier to like divert back to English because people just expect me to speak English anyway. People oh. expect me not to speak Malay. It went on for like 
I think the first year. And then by the second year, I couldn't speak it. Like, I have the Malay words in my brain, but I, it just won't come out of my mouth. I was so scared. Are you worried that it's it might be different? Like Yeah, uh... it gave me some kind of anxiety. It was so strange. So now I'm trying to like force myself to speak more Malay uh... as well. Yeah. Because for myself, I used to just speak Chinese and and Korean. Okay. So I actually seldom speak English and Malay. But also during I do those live, mm-hmm. I, it also practice my bahasa also. Mm-hmm. So it, actually, it's quite good. Yeah, I I feel like language is such a strange thing. Like for me, I grew up speaking English. Mm-hmm. Then I I went to Chinese school. Oh. So I was speaking Chinese in school. Mm-hmm. And then of course we learn Malay. Uh-huh. But even now, even though I'm fluent in like Mandarin, like if I want to go on Instagram Live or I had to host an event in Chinese, <laughs> I can I feel so anxious. <laughs> I don't know why. It's not like I don't speak the language. I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because for me, I knew that my English or Malay is not that good. Mm-hmm. But still, I try. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing, yeah. right? Especially with language. Because I have one friend, he don't really have confidence on mm-hmm. speaking English. So he even scared to call the waiter. Ah. So I just called him, you need to do things by your own. Have you always been this confident or is it something that you had to learn? No. I was a kid really, really scared of people mm-hmm. because before I went to Korea, I am I was just a kid, very silent and... I remember you being very quiet actually yes. as a kid. Yeah. I was introvert. Mm. Introvert, right? Yeah. W- were you someone who had a lot of friends at school or no? Actually, in school, I'm quite famous. <laughs> Oh, 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 <laughs> because you were a dancer. Yes. Okay, okay. And then I still remember there's one day I made the, the hair like go up. They call <laughs> Fei Ji Tou. <laughs> yes. Like, at that time, it's very famous, right? And then the next day, like most of the guy who did the same. <laughs> oh. So I was like, oh, Trend, wow. Trendsetter <laughs> since young, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now, I mean, with social media, are you obviously still very popular? Because I was, I was on your social media, and you actually um, use a lot of pickup lines in your caption. Y- yes. Oh, Kalista, I was wondering if you had an extra heart. Uh, no. Oh, because mine was just <laughs> stolen. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me I'm sure I can find one just for you as I <laughs> So is this is this a way of you like interacting with your fans or is it something like you just like like where do you come up with all these like pickup lines from my s- smart brain Oh okay got it got it all from here <laughs> automatically <laughs> Well I like it I think it like, it's it makes it fun right like not everything needs to be so serious <laughs> As you see my Instagram, mm-hmm. I have a lot of long hashtags. Even the Intuit account, uh, yeah. you have really long Malay <laughs> hashtags. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is definitely different from like the norm. Because like normally people just put like today uh, or OTD, like something like one word, one word. But I just like satu karangan. Wow. Yeah, so Isaac's <laughs> hashtags are all like, the hashtag also pick up line. No? <laughs> 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 but you are also really like interactive. Like you, you reply to all your comments, right? Not, Not all. Like, yeah. There's a lot of comments, but yeah. you, you, you do interact with your fans, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Like uh, every time when I post YouTube video, because my video, it's always post premiere time. Mm-hmm. So I used to just talk with them in the live chat first and oh. then just watch the video together with them. Oh, that's actually really <laughs> nice. Like... There's like a blurred line of separation between idol and fan. And I think like the fans really do appreciate that, right? Yeah, because for me, I think idol and fans not only just have to meet up to talk. Mm -hmm. So we can also through social media or anything through live also. Okay, and since we're back on this topic, I know like a lot of the members are still on hiatus. They're still in military service. Yes. Um, when do you think the group's going to be back together? Um, actually, our last member come out on September. Okay. So... Any plans for a comeback? Um, secret yet. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! I knew it wasn't going to give me anything. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so until September at least, the group is still going to be on hiatus. But yes. after that, we don't know. Yes. Okay. So I'm... until September, I'm going to concentrate on my own first mm-hmm. because I'm going to 
release song very very soon <laughs> i guess a solo single <laughs> yes <laughs> okay but is it going to be in korean or is it going to be in um malay or? in malay which mm. is very challenging for me uh-huh. because i used to just sing chinese and korean songs mm. so malay song is quite challenging for me for all of the pronunciation Okay, I yes. mean, I can I can imagine that. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, it's going okay. It's going well. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> because you also performed at an award show recently, right? Oh yeah. So how was that? Did you perform a Malay song there? Oh uh, no, I perform only dance and one of our song, Intuit song, mm-hmm. Ulala, La Poisoning. So you, you you performed a group song by yourself. Uh, with the uh, backup dancers. Wow. Okay. That's why I have to do everything by my own right now. It's quite challenging, but it's fun mm-hmm. to do. Okay, so you've been busy. Like everyone else is taking a break, and you're like, nope, gotta get back into it. Yeah, I need to not let people to forget who is into it. I need yeah. to keep on doing things. Well, I think people haven't forgotten because when you went to the award shows, there were fans waiting for you there. Yeah, right? and then I was so shocked because it is so far, mm-hmm. and. We we even drive like one hour thirty minutes to that place, oh. so actually it's quite far for them to go. Mm-hmm. So I also appreciate. So did you take photos with everyone? Yeah. See if you see Isaac on the street, just <laughs> say hi. He will take a photo with you. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know. Actually, there's uh some of the DM from Instagram because even though I didn't reply, but I did watch all of mm-hmm. the DMs and then there's a lot of people say oh I saw you just now and I was so shy to take a picture with you so from now on don't shy just say hi just say hi and come and take a picture <laughs> yeah I think like a lot of times we, we especially as Malaysians we're kind of like a little late not laid back but we kind of pull back a bit because we don't want to be in your face right uh... but I, I feel like especially in Malaysia like people are very willing to take photos and very willing to just be normal like yeah, yeah yeah like I said there's always a blurred line between celebrity and not so mm. I, I think that's the good part about Malaysia like yes. we don't over overwhelm people yeah 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 but then also we 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 don't get to say hi and take photos Ah. so just 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 say hi you know like don't be scared yeah be brave (laughs) (laughs) okay well how did fans like kind of react before because i'm sure you didn't announce like you were coming back to malaysia right so i actually didn't announce when i'm back here Mm -hmm. but i announced it when i signed with our new company Mm -hmm. so that's why those fans know knew that I was back. So before you announced it, when people saw you on the street, what was their reaction? Actually, I'm quite wondering, even I I wear those like bucket hat mm-hmm. and mask, how they recognize me? Right? It's because like, you're not even expecting to see this person in this country. Yeah. How did you recognize? I really need to know this because... So, how do you know that? Yeah, <laughs> please, please let us know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm very curious because... Like, on the eyes... Yeah, and everyone's wearing masks now. It's yeah. not like, hey, this person's wearing a mask. It's like Mm-mm-mm. suspicious. It's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> everyone's wearing yeah. a mask. So how did you even tell? But then again, when I went downstairs to see you just now, mm-hmm. from the back of your head, I was always like, ah, that's Isaac. Lah. Really? I don't know why. It's just a vibe, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is definitely true. <laughs> Have confidence. Oh, before like we wrap this up, like, is there anything about the K-pop industry that you think would be surprising that people wouldn't know? I would say that actually there's a lot of kind artists mm-hmm. like Chong Ah Son Benim. He she mm-hmm. even talked to me and like she's kind. Okay. And also Son Mi Son Benim and also Mama Mu Son Benim. Ah, okay. And I love Mama Mu. Oh, they are very funny. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they are. They are really funny. <laughs> every time you watch those music shows, mm-hmm. we have to stand on the stage every time after the end, right? Mm-hmm. To like, today's winner, who, 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 like this. Mm-hmm. So before that, actually, we all of the artists, we line up outside and actually we talk to each other mm-hmm. a lot. Okay, like, so you do have like opportunities to like talk to different groups as well. Yes, but that time I was so shy. I I also hate that why I'm that kind of shy person mm-hmm. at the time. But for now, I, I don't really feel shy at all. So I need excited? to be brave. Are you excited to go back to Korea? Uh, yes, of course. And to meet members and to meet mm-hmm. all the friends. So end of the year lah. Uh, <laughs> 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 I gotta try. I gotta try. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, I guess like while we're waiting for the Intuit comeback, at least we can look forward to your solo single. So yes. can you tell me anything about that? Like, do we have a title? Do we have a release date? <clears throat> release date, maybe this few months. <laughs> 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 and okay, that's all for us. Oh no. So wait. If I if I have a new song, I will definitely come again. Okay, well, where can the fans like keep up with the news for whatever you're dropping soon? Uh, maybe you can. You guys can go to follow my Instagram mm-hmm. or maybe TikTok, Twitter, or Facebook. Mm-hmm. So you guys can just search I S A A C and spacebar V K M. I S A A C. You mean like an underscore? Uh, actually, there's underscore with different co- uh, different account. <gasps> Like Instagram oh, okay. and Twitter, of course, there's underscore. Mm-hmm. And then for Facebook and TikTok, there's no underscore. Okay. So okay. you just search Isaac VKM. Okay, well, go follow him and then we can keep up with everything that's happening. And yes. hopefully we'll talk to him soon when he finally tells me when he's going to drop <laughs> this song. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for coming to join me. Thank you for podcast. having me today. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, I'll see you next episode. with Callista.